Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Ant-Man movie thoughts. Starting with some of the last minute notes. Uh, I suppose we could... Yes. When they... I, I like the kind of... You know... The way they, they gradually build to the reveal that this, you know... Yeah, this, this guy who was already there in 89 that, you know, yeah, he is Hydra. And, you know, at first it's like, why is Hank so angry with that? Okay, that guy wants to steal, copy the, yeah, the, the formula. And why exactly, you know, and, and then we see that he's still there in present day. And, you know, hamster wheels turning, and then he must be S.H.I.E.L.D. Because back then it was S.H.I.E.L.D. And S.H.I.E.L.D. turned out to be Hydra, so the fact that he's still here, and then, excuse me, straight up say, this is Hydra. And he's like, yes, they are good customers. <laughs> you know, it's like... But, but they're high. Oh, okay. Well, if if you don't care, I guess that's yeah. That was that was a good uh, yeah. We we didn't know how much he had lost it before. You know, we we get the. <laughs> you know, we we see he's pretty out there. You know, right from the start, it it gets nice and you know it's, it's all RoboCop. You know, uh, you know, uh, someone high up in the, you know. Yeah, in, in some kind of company making weapons or the like, you know, you know, he goes and meets the, the other guy in the bathroom to intimidate him, you know, so that was, that was a nice little, yeah, and then, you know, yeah, he's, you know, he's got a little gadget there and then he just zaps him and then, oh, Oh, still working out the kinks. <laughs> PG-13, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't bloody, so the fact that a guy just got... Yeah. PG-13. Anyway, yeah. I guess that was the, the actual shrink ray thing, because he says you're still working out the kinks. So, yeah, I, I figured that's what that was, and then, you know, again, it, like, like I said in the review, it's not clear how long, you know, we have what amount of time the, the movie takes place over, but, you know, given all the training and such that, you know, Scott has to go through, you know, yeah, weeks, months, something like that, so when we see him you know, that first time he gets a, you know, he gets Dolly shrunk and, and the jerk, uh, what, a, what a jerk. Anyway, yeah, I see that's, that's how you get the audience, just put something cute in front of them and then have the bad guy do something mean to it. Yeah, you know, after that, we can presume that he's been shrinking himself, you know, doing the, the, crazy, you know, scientist thing of, you know, testing the thing on himself, and he doesn't have the helmet, and because of that, it's messing with his mind, and, yeah, so that, you know, so, so there at the end, you finally see just how, you know, just how far gone he is, and it is a little unfortunate that that's, you know, 
that that last part of the film that's where a lot of his lines in the trailers come from so you know i was sitting there thinking they're not even gonna have i'm gonna destroy everything you care about in there are they and then he says it as you know fighting in cassie's room and you know, gotta love the line why don't you pick on someone your own size you know and and cross has of course militarized a similar version of the hero suit taking his notes directly from the MCU Iron Man villains and yeah just you know when when he sees you know sees the plans at, at Hank's place you know love how the, the just carefully being you know like you know folded up because he's using the thing with the ants and and you know Hank is like well what I'm, I'm here if you want to talk to me. Eye contact, so, yeah. And the, you know, and, and he calls Hope right after it. And she has to stand there and say, oh, yeah, he's a senile old fool. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. And, yeah, just the, the whole, the, the, yeah, so, so, you know, for a while, we, we don't really know. We, we think that, you know, it's going well. And then they do the, the, you know, great classic heist thing of the guy knew that the that it was coming. So he, you know, tripled security. And, okay, well, I'm going to bring in some last minute, you know, I, I have a crew. We know these guys. Please don't bring them. Okay. And, the you know, okay, well, they can't have done this. So we just got to do that. And, the you know. It was, it was quite clever, the, the water, yeah, that's, and, and, you know, he's whistling, he's going in there, what are you doing in here? A oh, boss man said to make sure I was secure. I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, uh, and I, I do kind of like that, you know, as the, the place is blowing up, you know, he realizes, oh man, he's still in there, and he actually goes in there and drags him out, you know, that's a, a nice moment, it's, it's always... You know, gradually these movies are kind of, you know, getting more, more and more aware of the idea of collateral damage and trying to rescue people in the, you know, in this kind of, you know, that that you might endanger or that the enemy that 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 the villain might endanger. You know, unless you're a man of steel. But yeah, it it was yeah, he's he's straight up crazy. You know, there at the end. That was a a good reveal and I love the 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 thing with with Paxton. I swear for the longest time I just I thought that he was just the guy we we're supposed to hate. And I really hate when when movies just throw in the, you know, he's just the obstacle. He's just the new guy who, you know, the 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 ex-wife, you know, even the ex-wife isn't particularly, you know, harsh or anything. She's, you know, all things considered, she is being fairly reasonable to Scott. But then, you know, Paxson comes in, he's just a jerk. But then, you know, <laughs> between him kind of being, you know, just in in the overall, you know, the the last portion of the film, the the between being, you know, sent back and forth between cars and then actually coming through there at the end, you know, getting, you know, yeah, I mean, even if he, and, and he's really, he's ready to, you know, if even though Yellow Jacket is so, you know, dangerous and such, you know, he's still right there, he's not running away or anything, but, so, so, yeah, they did really good on his character, really, really well, and the, yeah, his character did good and well. 
yeah, the, you know, the moment, I, I love that he notices, you know, oh, well, that's, oh, it's, yeah, it's nothing about that particular type of car. It's just the type of car that undercover cops most commonly use, you know, and then they realize, oh, man, it's going to have, you know, Hank put in prison, and then, you know, no, oh, this, this isn't part of the plan, what are you doing? And he runs up, and he steals their car and runs. That's really funny. And then they're like, well, we can't make an arrest if we don't have the car. So they run off. And then they find he, you know, crashes into it. And, oh, man. And then he runs into the their van. And then he hammers on that and honks. Oh, no. And then they come in and, and they hide in there. And the, and, and you got to love the, the complete cliche of the, the hacking thing of, Oh no, he was already sent away, but the button has to be pressed, and the button's pressed. Oh, phew. You know, just, yeah. I really love the, the whole, the, the details of the heist once, you, you know, frying all the, the computers and backups and everything, and then blowing up the entire, you know, because if, if there's one thing T2 tells you other than how much a machine can grow in just mere hours. It is that you don't change the future by killing the person who's going to change the future. You don't you don't fix things for the future by killing. You do it by blowing up. You just have to find a big enough building of science stuff and then you blow it up. That solves the problem. And yeah, just the yeah, really, really close. And then, you know, getting it into the helicopter. What, you really thought a heist was going to change the world? And then the whole thing blows up. And, and and then you also see just how crazy... You can't fire the gun in here! And, yeah. And the... You know, and, and I'm glad he made him pay for Anthony. That just, yeah. Anyway, the, the, yeah, I, I love how some things were made really big. I, I, this is a cute nod to Giant Man, to, to Ant-Man actually using the, you know, that, that he has these little discs that he can throw and, you know, he, he keeps, you know, throwing them off and then, you know, suddenly we have a giant ant. And it's one messed up looking doll. <laughs> and the giant tells the tank and then it just lies there and the eyes just keep sort of <laughs> Yeah. That's this is really good. I wonder how many people went out and actually bought a Thomas the Tank engine from from yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's it's the kind of product placement that is more forgivable, I'd say, because it's not so much saying, look at our great product product, it's saying can you imagine if our product was, you know, ramming you in the face, or if it was, you know, the, the, yeah, if it was like bigger, and the, the, and and yeah, just in general that their final fight in in her room was really great, and then she's got the the ant afterwards and feeding it. Yeah, and and the just a few things. I love Cassie. The the you know that you know, he gives her this this present and it's just this awful thing, this nightmarish thing. And she's like, I love it, you know, and everyone's like, yeah, it's just you know, but are you sure you don't want anyone? Nope, I love this one. It's yeah. You know, he knows her. He just and and the you know, he's like, Mommy was so happy you showed up. She did, uh, she choked on her drink. <laughs> and the yeah, the the thing about are you trying to are you trying to stop my daddy? Well, you know, just we're we're just trying to keep him safe. I hope you don't catch him. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. And the let's see. I suppose that more or less covers. But but yeah, also the him taking out you know 
him yeah him him ultimately defeating the I also, also love that you know the the cross knew that an ant man would be attacking so he had the you know he, he set up the trap to to catch him and he even knew who excuse me it was going to be in the suit and excuse me thus who excuse me it, you know where to go to attack that was a really fast police you know like pretty much the moment that he that that yellow jacket was in the house they got the 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 call about it so yeah that was nice and convenient as well though i yeah actually without that i'm not entirely sure scott would have known where to look for cross so yeah and you know he can't get through the the armor itself because you know it's, it's I love the Titanic stuff early you know ice ice killed DiCaprio ice killed everybody no nope, didn't kill that old woman she was still through the yeah anyway his suit was not made of what Titanic was made of actually didn't he say it was made of titanium which and ironic for that. anyway yeah so so you know he can't do that and then you know he you know Hanks Hank said, we're not doing it for our world, we're doing it for theirs. So, you know, ultimately, what he really has to do is stop Yellow Jacket. And he goes ahead and actually risks the, yeah, with with the the permanent shrinking and the, the thing. And that's the thing that... I am not going to give away what other recent movie did something similar in case people who might still watch that movie haven't watched it. It wasn't any better there. Okay, it was worse there because it, that was... In there it wasn't just the this last little bit, but, but the moment that they mentioned, you know, oh, you'll be shrinking forever and you'll, you may never get out. I was like, please let that be a throwaway. Please let that, you know. In X2, Nightcrawler says, if I can't see where I'm going, I might end up inside a wall. He's just saying that to say that that's the limit of his. But I was hoping that they that's what they would do here. But no, he shrinks and shrinks. And I don't want to hate it because it's visually, it's it's nicely done and you get the idea. And I do think that there's, you know, interesting things can be done with this, you know. But then, you know, he hears her voice and he says, and I, I mean, fair enough, the, the tech aspect of it. Okay, that more or less makes sense. He takes one of the blue discs that make things bigger, and he puts it in with the regular regulator, and that fits. Okay, sure. I mean, it's you know he he MacGyvered a you know thumbprint earlier on in the film, so it's it's not that. Big, but just this thing of you know, oh no, I'm shrinking, I'm lost in this world without no, with no dimension, and no, oh, I hear my daughter, I must come back, and it just, yeah, it's just, <sighs> yeah, I really wish that wasn't in there, but the, yeah, moving on to the post credits the first one pretty much saying that you know there will be a wasp and it will be hope and i'm glad that we are getting a wasp but i really do wish it was janet and not hope but yeah maybe you know 
I guess it's possible that they could bring in Janet in the, you know, this one just set up that she's, you know, gone and, you know, and yeah, and we know to where, we just don't know how she would get back from there. I guess there's a possibility that she will, you know, be, be rescued from there and certainly hope, you know, she could look into, you know, use, use what he, what, what Hank knows about the, I don't remember what it was called, but, but the, the, the perma shrinking thing, that, that world and, you know, gets, bring in some new ideas, maybe fill around with the tech, you know, it's, it's a prototype, maybe you can do more, maybe they can get, yeah, I, I think that, and or maybe at least some, you know, past, I mean, now we at least do have that, you know, Ant-Man was part of the Avengers way back when, but, yeah, now the, and, you know, the, the bit with, you know, okay, the first thing we should do is call the Avengers, and he's like, I've spent so much time and energy keeping it out of the hands of one Stark, I'm not about to give it, uh, you know, over to another, and, yeah, if, if Tony got the, the Pym particles, the, he wouldn't exactly lock them away, like, like Hank in, intends, so that's, yeah. And the, finally, the post credit scene, you know, Bucky is trapped, and, you know, Cap and Falcon are there, and they're like, you know, I'm not sure we should bring this to Tony. And they, they mention, you know, he might not even be able to, you know, he, there was something about he's like answering to something, so, you know, very much setting up civil war, and yeah, you know, that, and, you know, ultimately Falcon's like, I know a guy, which was, I, I love that that's how they ended the movie, that, you know, okay, breathe and focus, what did you want to tell me, you know, and, and the whole thing comes up, okay, but what did you say? Yeah. That was, yeah, that was so great, and the, and, and I do quite like that they did fit in, you know, there's an actual fight between Ant-Man and Falcon, and that's, <laughs> and that's also good, because otherwise there's almost no fighting, you know, I, I'll take hero versus hero because of stupid misunderstanding, as long as it's a fight between two powered people, you know, that's... I realize that's difficult to do in these origin stories, but that is something that these origin stories can really, you know, yeah, that they really need to put in there so that, you know, it's not all just exposition. But, yeah, that, the, the, that, you know, the, the idea of, you know, can, how, how will Tony react when he finds the Winter Soldier? You know, it is this thing of, I mean, I don't know too much about the details of the MCU Civil War, but, yeah, you know, they're, they're, in the comics, basically, Tony's on the side that says, you know, have have a register of every powered person and the bad guys they're going in what was it like a another dimensions prison kind of thing so they for sure cannot get away and he might think you know yeah bucky <laughs> bucky bucky schmucky this guy killed like, you know, what what did they say? Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but he... I'm not sure he killed that many people, but he killed important people. And yeah, he is, you know, he spent decades being an assassin. And, I'm, you know, 
Cap's gonna look, you know, Cap looks at Bucky and is like, you know, I'm, I'm with you till the end, buddy. I can, I can fix this. I can, you know, he's, he's not lost. You know, it's, I, I can bring him back. I'm not giving up on him because he, you know, he gave him a chance there at, you know, and yeah. So, so that's a really good way to lead into that. I, you know, that, that was one of the better, you know, post-credits scenes of the more recent ones, and as far as leading into, you know, future movies. So, yeah. And the... But, but yeah, some, you know, bringing in Bucky, who's this, you know... There's, there's this thing of, might he, you know, Cap figures that, you know, he can bring him back, that he's not lost. But, you know, the other side, the side that, you know, really wants to, to stop any bad guys might want him locked up at the very least. And that is a good, you know, and, and that makes Bucky very much kind of the, you know, both characters are going to be good because in the comics at least it is very, yeah probably in the movies as well because there's two such major characters and two such major characters in the MCU Tony purely on the side of registration and registration and the the villains put away and cap is very much against that and yeah and of course there is still, I mean, now that they got Spider-Man, it's entirely possible that he'll be in there because he is he is pretty much right there in the middle between the two of them in the comics. I don't know if they're gonna do that, if they can quite do that without having to, you know, really establish Spider-Man too much yet, but and I do love that, you know, the the Guerrilla Reporter, well, you know, I know this guy who crawls you know, he, he climbs, he, you know, he swings, and it just, and, and, you know, everyone knew Spider-Man, you know, they're actually, and, yeah, that's, yeah. Now, I suppose that was pretty much all of it. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.